is 11.42, and I want to call this meeting of the Legislative Committee to order. Um, could we get a roll call, please? Member Chapman? Here. Member Childress? Yes. Chair Desar? Here. Member Eckhoff? Here. Member Glassy? Here. Member Day? Here. All right, thank you. We have a quorum. And welcome to our other members who are here as well this morning. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes Second. of the Legislative Committee meeting from Tuesday, March 14th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Do we have public comment? None provided. Um, I think we did. But maybe it was in the other minutes. So somebody, somebody wrote in to support our yes. um, Ethan's Law. Yes. The raising of yeah. so that was was okay. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not going to make any chairman's remarks because we've got a couple of guests here. We've got an overview of <laughs> the peanut gallery over there. Next time, I'm going to make a 30 minute speech <laughs> just for right. to say. I'm going to be absent for 20 minutes. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to make chairman's remarks because we've got a couple of guests here. We've got an overview of the National Association of Counties um, from Brian Namey. He's the Chief Public Affairs Officer at NACO. And we also have Jill McCoy from ISACO. Welcome to you both. It's not a bit. We'll start with, um, we'll start with uh, Brian Namey from NACO. Hello, Brian. We Hello. have We have a Hello. lot of new members since the November election. So please tell us what NACO does and how you benefit counties like DuPage. Thank you so much, Chair. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. All right, wonderful. Well, I thank you so much for inviting me today and I wanna thank you for DuPage County's membership in NACO. Uh, I know that several of you have participated in NACO committees and have attended NACO events. I know uh, looking at the minutes, uh, uh, my colleague, Joe uh, McCoy, uh, was, was uh, pointing out that Mary Keating was uh, on the board of directors representing the National Association of County Community and Economic Development Directors that's serving on NACO's board from DuPage County. And of course, your, um, your neighbor, Will County, Illinois, uh, our, our national president is, is a board member in Will County, Illinois. So you're, you're in, in good company in that region of Illinois and participating in NACO. And I, I'm really pleased to provide an overview for those of you who may be less familiar. Um, if I can uh, share my screen, I can go through a few slides to, to walk you through some of the big benefits uh, of being involved in NACO. So I think I'm not able to do that right now. So if... Yeah, no. yeah, no. There we go. So hopefully now you can see my screen. <clears throat> and I'll start uh, very simply, you know, NACO's mission is to strengthen America's counties. It, it doesn't get simpler than that. Many organizations have long-winded mission statements. Ours is, is a few simple words to strengthen America's counties. And we do that in a variety of ways um, to achieve that mission and our vision of healthy, safe, and vibrant counties across America. We were founded 88 years ago, and we focus on five key areas. Number one, advocating for counties' priorities in federal policymaking, promoting exemplary county policies and practices, nurturing leadership skills and expanding knowledge networks, optimizing county and taxpayer resources and cost savings, and enriching the public's understanding of county government. And I'll go through each of these very briefly uh, this afternoon. But first, I want to explain, you know, who are NACO's members? DuPage County is a NACO member. And when you're a NACO member, that means all of the elected and appointed officials in county government are members of NACO. We are not an individual membership association. We are, uh, we take members who are county governments. And so we're pleased to have the nation's county governments as members. And so anybody who is employed by the county is uh, eligible to participate in all of our programs and services. So starting with county board members like you, we also represent the independently elected officials and the, the row officers, constitutional officers 
in, in the county. And many of the senior staff professionals, department directors and, and leaders of different programs and projects. NACO also has over 30 national affiliates and affinity organizations that represent the um, broad scope of functions in county government, like county engineers or the community and economic development directors like uh, Mary Keating. We also rely on our strong partnerships with state associations like ISACO. Much of what we do at the national level is contingent upon those strong partnerships with our state associations. And we focus in Washington, D.C., starting with our policy work. We are intergovernmental partners, and everything we do at the national level is on this, this fact-based, county-focused, intergovernmental partnership model. We educate our state and federal partners on our county roles and responsibilities. You know, just as ISACO advocates for you in Springfield, we advocate for you here in Washington, D.C. We spend a great deal of effort in reminding our federal partners about county roles and responsibilities and the impacts of things like unfunded mandates, uh, uh, proposals to preempt county level decision making and, and why and the impacts of those kinds of decisions have on the ground in counties like DuPage and counties across America. I know in your packets, you've got a list of our uh, 2023 federal policy priorities. I, I won't uh, read them all. I, I trust that you'll have an opportunity to take a look at those federal policy priorities. NACO actually has uh, the American County Platform, which is hundreds of pages of specific um, legislation and priorities of America's county governments that we advocate for every day, but we distill it into sort of these 11 priorities that remain a top focus. And just in summary, we are helping counties invest resources from the American Rescue Plan uh, and the bipartisan infrastructure law and other major uh, uh, federal legislation and funding opportunities. We're helping counties expand access to high-speed internet, address the mental health and substance abuse crisis, enhance housing affordability, and strengthen our disaster response and resiliency efforts. So those are just a few, a handful of the things that we are focusing on federal policies to help at the local level. Taking you know, the example of the American Rescue Plan, um, I think you may have had an opportunity to see our online resource hub. We've got tremendous resources, everything from the latest analysis of the U.S. Treasury guidance and uh, on, on the final rule um, to specific examples of county investments of American Rescue Plan resources. And, and tools to help you tell that story back home. You know, as we see proposals crop up, and I, I think we might see more to potentially claw back some of these funds, we have to do a better job of communicating to our federal partners exactly how counties are deploying these resources on the ground to respond to the widespread impacts of the pandemic and to position us in a stronger position for the future. When it comes to the bipartisan infrastructure law, We've got a really great analysis of that law, but also a, an up-to-date funding matrix where you can search for opportunities that counties are specifically eligible for. So you can take a look and drill into that very complicated piece of legislation with actionable intelligence to help you achieve your goals at the local level. As we advocate for county priorities at the federal level, we're also enhancing peer learning and public service excellence through our partnerships with ISACO and other state associations. And I'll, I'll highlight one example. A few months ago, we launched an effort designed to help state associations and counties leverage opioid settlement dollars. Our Opioid Solution Center is a comprehensive web-based tool that it helps empower you to invest resources in effective treatment, prevention, recovery, and other public health practices that can actually save lives and address the underlying causes of substance use disorders. In addition to this work, we have a number of tools that are designed to support the county workforce, uh, especially what county employees have faced over the past few years. We want to support the county workforce by ensuring that they have the support they need for their mental health. We launched a special initiative a few months ago to support the nation's 3.6 million county employees 
in partnership with the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, we have our Mental Health First Aid Program. This is a first of its kind program designed to help county employees identify, understand, and respond to signs of mental health and substance use challenges that our peers, our colleagues and coworkers, and even our friends and family might be facing. We also have the High Performance Leadership Academy and the Cybersecurity Leadership Academy. These are 12 week completely online leadership development programs for county employees. There's a robust curriculum that was developed with Fortune 1000 private sector executives, public sector leaders, world renowned uh, academics and thought leaders, including the late General Colin Powell, who helped us design the program. And this is not sort of an esoteric leadership philosophy course. This is a course designed to equip frontline county officials with practical tools like communications, team building, change management. Since the program began a few years ago, more than 8,000 county employees from close to 2,000 counties have graduated from uh, these academies, including one DuPage County IT professional who completed our Cybersecurity Leadership Academy. We also have a very broad uh, portfolio of cost-saving solutions to help you and your residents save time and money. Uh, I'll highlight just one to, this afternoon, our Live Healthy Prescription Drug Discount Program for residents. This is a no-cost program available to all NACO member counties, and it allows our residents to save up to 80% on their prescription drugs and up to 40% on the, uh, the brand name, 80% on generics and 40% on the brand name drugs. Um, this is not insurance, uh, but it does help residents with their ever increasing prescription drug costs or underinsured residents. DuPage County residents since 2006 have actually saved close to $2 million using this program. And just last year alone, DuPage County residents saved $30,000. I just wanna flag this as a real opportunity to, um, to, to grow the program within DuPage County. Um, you know, anybody can go online and download a card, take it to almost any pharmacy and see if they can save some money on their prescription drugs. It really is a great program designed to give back to county residents and uh, residents are saving money every day using this program. As I wrap up, I, I just wanna highlight one additional program that helps us enrich the public's understanding of county government at the local level. One of the questions you as county board members probably receive the most is, you know, what does the county do? What is a county board member? Folks are often confused between city responsibilities or county responsibilities, state or federal responsibilities. And so, and it is National County Government Month this month. So we're, we're leaning into educating the public on, on county roles and responsibilities and what we do every day. We uh, have a partnership with an organization called iCivics, which was founded by retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. And it, we created a whole suite of civic education resources. We have a, a junior high school curriculum, a high school curriculum, an activity book for elementary students, and my personal favorite, the County's Work Online Educational Game, where students or, or people of all ages can simulate the role of a county official balancing citizens' requests with a budget. And if they do a good job at the end of the game, they get reelected. So it's just a great primer, a great you know, introductory level sort of thing to help folks in the public understand what kinds of challenges and opportunities county officials face every single day. These, all these educational resources are, are free. Um, courtesy of NACO and uh, aligned with state standards. So if you're going into classrooms, you know, I would encourage you to, to use these resources. I would encourage you to work with school districts to, to adopt these resources, but just a great way to help educate the public and, and our young people about uh, the role that counties play in our lives. This is just a, a small snapshot of, of what NACO has to offer. Um, as, I, as I began, you know, we're really grateful for those of you who participate in NACO. If you don't participate, uh, I encourage you to get involved in our initiatives. I saw uh, from the minutes, uh, Member Rutledge has been designated the NACO representative, and we look forward to continuing to work with her and, and welcome all of your participation in our uh, 
um, our committees, our task forces, our, our events. I know that a handful of DuPage County board members serve on NACO committees. Four of your IT uh, staff participate in our tech exchange, plus, of course, Mary Keating, who I mentioned, mentioned earlier. Um, but we offer programs for anything that you're interested in as a county official from community and economic development to criminal justice, from technology to energy and infrastructure and everything in between. Uh, finally, I encourage all of you to join us in Travis County, Austin, Texas, uh, this July for our annual conference. It's a great opportunity to see what NACO is all about firsthand. Um, NACO is truly your national nonpartisan association. You are literally NACO. And through our collaboration and our talent and our innovation, we can work together to strengthen DuPage County and counties across America. Uh, I'm happy to take questions, but just thank you again for inviting me today. And I look forward to working with you as we build stronger counties that result in a stronger America. Thank you, I'll Brian. stop sharing my screen now. Thank you so much. Do we have questions for Brian? Anybody have questions for Brian? Sheila? Just a comment that uh, I've been to a couple of the NACO uh, events and would urge all of you to consider going this summer. Excellent. Yeah. Of course, Hi, Brian. Brian, Hi, this is Mary. Thanks for mentioning me three times. <laughs> <laughs> can you uh, can you just talk a little bit about the uh, the large urban county caucus, sort of its purpose, and um, you know, I think that's really a, a, an excellent group for our board members to get plugged into. Could you talk about it for a, a little bit? Brian, did you hear me? Uh -oh. It looks like he's frozen. Something. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Brian, you're muted. Yeah, but he can't hear. He's like frozen. No, he's not frozen. Oh, there he is. Frozen. And he's muted, but I don't think he can hear her. Hey, Brian, can you hear us here in the room? He's muted. That's the question. He's muted. Are we muted? Brian, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. We're not muted. Oh, we're muted. Oh. I'm so sorry, Mary. I'll try to get back to him. Brian, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. I could not hear you previously. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Mary has a Mary Keating. Yes. Hey, Brian, it's Mary Keating. Oh. Hi, Mary. Uh, can you spend a second just talking about the Large Urban County Caucus, sort of its purpose and membership? Absolutely. And I know, I know a few of the board members are on the Large Urban County Caucus uh, steering committee. And we have a Large Urban County Caucus for counties whose populations exceed 500,000 residents, um, and there are essentially about 120 uh, counties like DuPage County whose, whose residents uh, exceed 500,000 residents. And the Large Urban County Caucuses provides policy guidance and perspectives on the impacts of uh, federal policies and even county programs and practices from the urban perspective, the urban lens. And so specifically focusing on uh, a wide range of issues from economic development to mental health to infrastructure uh, and, and just the whole gamut of, of, of resources. Um, so I would invite you know, participation in the Large Urban County Caucus. It's a great forum for peer networking as well with counties of a similar size and scale. And so you oftentimes find that um, you know, we always say that if you've seen one county, you've seen one county, but there, uh, there's nothing to say that we can't learn from one another and adapt uh, policies and, and practices that uh, are, you know, fitting for each community. And a lot of times with the Large Urban County Caucus, you'll learn about a particular program and be able to scale it to your unique needs and circumstances. So those are just a few of the benefits and, and a snapshot of being involved in the Large Urban County Caucus. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, I want to give um, Joe McCoy a chance to speak here too. Joe's with us, Zago. But by way of introduction, I'm going to say Joe is one of the most responsive um, people I know. It was a Sunday a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to tell a story on myself. You know, you're doing your own thing. You're looking through your board packet. I'm just like, I often say that Illinois has 102 counties. And I often say we're one of the few 
DuPage County is one of the few with federal and then state lobbyists. And then I started thinking, I wonder how many do have federal and state lobbyists. So it's a Sunday afternoon. I text Joe real quickly and I'm like, oh shoot, it's a Sunday. And he got back to me right away. So anyway, if you guys were wondering too, only 4% of federal lobbyists and only 9% of Illinois County have state lobbyists. But Joe, thank you for being so responsive. On a Sunday, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure, Madam Chair. I, I appreciate you reaching out and we're here to be of service. And that's uh, any day that ends in why, I'll leave it at that. Please feel welcome to reach out. We're always happy to, to help. And uh, I wanted to begin, uh, as Brian did, by thanking you for your membership. DuPage County, as I've said before, is one of the founding members of ISACO, and uh, we will never forget that. We're very appreciative for all you do, not only for your residents, but also within ISACO and, and NACO as well. As I was listening to, to Brian uh, talk, and he had that, that one of the first slides he had, and he talked about the different, um, the different groups that NACO partners with, and I kept thinking of a wagon wheel, where all the spokes, you know, kind of joined together at a central hub, and when they're all firing together, you know, the, the vehicle moves smoothly because the wheel is functional. And I, I, I would use that as a good way to describe the relationship between NACO and ISACO. And for that matter, NACO and other state associations throughout the country. Uh, it's a very uh, integrated relationship. We work uh, closely with each other to try to strengthen what each other is doing. They're focused on um, issues that are confronting the states and the state legislatures are always asking about that. And uh, we work to um, help them communicate their message and to amplify their message about, uh, and I'm sticking to legislation here, uh, about what's happening at a federal level. And uh, we had a very good uh, situation that developed recently that I think is illustrative of the relationship between NACO and uh, ISACO, uh, talking about uh, Illinois specifically. Last Wednesday, I received an, uh, a, an email from NACO's legislative team telling us that there was a fire grant bill that was going to be debated within the next several hours on that Wednesday, and that there was an amendment to that bill that would have, if it had been successful, clawed back ARPA money, unspent ARPA money from counties and municipalities, local governments that have not yet spent that money. Well, we are in favor of counties maintaining their, their ability to spend that money. And so the ask was, can you please contact your legislative, uh, your senators, because it's a, a Senate issue, please contact your senators, but this has to be done very quickly. So we were able to move very quickly, and I wrote a letter to, uh, letters to Senators Durbin and Duckworth, provided them to our contract lobbyist that also does work in Washington, and that same day, just you know, within between the time the vote was held and when we drafted the letters, our contract lobbyists had the letter with NACO's message in it in the hands of the chief of staff for both uh, Senators Durbin and, and Duckworth. And then I received uh, a notice that the amendment uh, fortunately had failed and that Senate, I, I didn't hear back from Senator uh, um, Duckworth's office, but Senator Durbin's office had responded to our contract lobbyists who responded back to me that Senator Durbin had in fact opposed that amendment and the letter was appreciated. Uh, and, and that's an example of how we can work together because as you know, whether you're dealing with state legislators, legislatures or you're dealing with Congress, you have to at times move very, very quickly. And, and NACO and ISACO are well positioned to move very quickly on some of these issues. And that, I just wanted to bring that up as a recent example. And there are countless examples of how we we work together to serve our, our member counties. Any questions for Joe McCoy? Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, for your time. Really appreciate it. Spending some time with us, letting especially our new members know what NACO and what I say go to. And again, Sheila Rutledge is our um, member on NACO. And do, are you our member on ISACO as well? Nobody has told me that, but okay, I would well, imagine that it filters down. Okay, perfect. So get to know Sheila Rutledge. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's move on to um, our business at hand, our action items. Last chance for questions. Okay, I know it's been a long day. You guys want to move on. So action items, I will make a motion to approve amending uh, the resolution LEG-R-0035-23, amending the county's 2023 federal legislative program to include um, 
Senate Bill uh, 576, the Railways, Railway Safety Act. So I made a motion and a second, the uh, HR 1674, the, Rail, the Derail Act, and HR 1633, the Rail Act. And by way of just opening discussion, I'll say, I don't know if you've read um, I've got the, the Senate bill here, but some of the things that I think will be really great to support is the Railway Safety Act of 2023, safety requirements for trains transporting hazardous materials. We've heard a lot about that in the news. This covers that. A um, couple of other highlights from this. Failure to cooperate. So is, there is some teeth to this bill if these rail companies do not cooperate with this act which I like, I like the fact that there's teeth in here. Um, Safe to Freight Act of 2023, um, increasing maximum civil penalties for violations of rail safety regulations. I think that's important to be in here. Safer tank cars, important. Hazardous material training for first responders is in here. I think that's important as well. So anyway, I support this and I hope you do too. Any other comments or discussion about this? Okay. <laughs> I thought okay. it was a really good analysis that with that NACO did. And just to say as a staff person, I use NACO a lot. They have very detailed analysis of federal bills. They have position papers. They have webinars that kind of where staff participates in. Uh, the ARPA guidelines they've issued, I've sent to Mary Catherine, has helped her a lot dissect ARPA over the past couple of years. So they really do provide a lot of benefit. But this analysis, I did talk about all three bills, the differences just like the chair said. So they're just a great resource that we use as well. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, do we just do a voice vote or is this all in favor? No, you can plug you do a voice vote. Oh, okay. Um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. And then I'll make a motion to approve amending the resolution LEG-R-003-4-23, amending the county's 2023 state legislative program. Um, this is, revolves around Ethan's law and the gun storage safety bills. And by way of discussion, I'll just begin. Cheryl, remind me, because um, Alice asked me this and I wasn't quite sure, is Ethan, does Ethan's law have a bill number or is it just something? Yes. Oh, it does. It does. Um, and Jason can provide probably a better summary of it, but oh. it is Senate bill, what was it? 1521. Yeah. But it's 1521, so, okay. Similar. Yeah, it's not. Right. Yeah, I want to make one, one comment. So it's Ethan's right. Law, it's Tristan on the federal level. That's why it was instituted and actually where it was uh, proposed. It's been reimposed in February at the federal level. And I apologize. I don't remember the federal office looking at our state one. Yeah. There's a bill. I don't want to call it Ethan's Law because it's similar. It's not the exact same bill as the federal. So that's why I would call it Senate Bill 1521. But essentially, it is Ethan's Law. Yeah, it, it does the right. exact same concept of um, requiring safe storage of a gun in the event there's a minor in the household or an individual who's not allowed to possess a weapon. And I remember the like number on the resolution. Okay, gotcha. And I remember like a year ago, we talked, I talked about Ethan's law and I told you the exact story of Ethan getting into a gun cabinet or something and we rid the whole thing. So any other comments or, and I, I would like to just thank um, um, member Chaplin who's been really um, a proponent of us supporting gun safety laws and, and and I think you brought up Ethan's law like a year ago as well. I don't put Ethan's law because safe gun storage yes so yes I've been happy to support it because the people our constituents want it this is what people want they want safe gun storage they want safe gun laws and yeah. any of you also and all of us have been all you know, of, all of us have we've been had multiple bills that we've, we've yeah. had you know we've been doing this for a year even Gary Grasso back in the day believe it or not he mm -hmm. um was a proponent for safe gun laws so um it's the i think it's the right thing to do and you yeah. know the people are they're desperate for it yeah. all right so any other discussion all right all in favor aye. aye any opposed all right that passes any old business oh just one question yes you think cheryl maybe um could you just give the committee a little synopsis of the hotel legislation that was passed I think it was last year about the um, hotels forming districts. Talked about the Illinois State. Did they pass it? I thought they did. Hotel. Where the hotels were allowed to form districts, and if they formed districts, then they could generate revenue, tax revenue. Oh, I don't think it passed, oh, but I do. I do. Okay. I do. kind of remember. The Naperville CBB has been talking about. It. I don't think it passed. Yeah. Okay. I it do kind of remember okay, I that. I thought it did pass. All right. 
right. Um, Can we bring it up for discussion at our next legislative meeting? Oh, sure. After you dig into it, maybe find out about it? Yeah, I know there's been bills because the 38 municipalities all have the ability to do a hotel motel tax. And so much of it has to go to the convention bureau and the rest they can use on economic development. And that amount, I, there's always a bill to change that amount per se. Um, the county, because we're not home rule, we don't have the right. ability to do a hotel motel right. tax. Um, we have looked at it before and every, I think every percentage of tax generates a couple of million dollars, but um, because all the hotels are in municipalities, they don't want the county to have that authority. So it's always been kind of a combative issue. Um, I, I do remember that bill. I think, let me try and find it and I'll just, send an update on it. Yeah, yeah. You just had I don't think I, it's pending this year though. Oh, cause I wasn't, I was, I thought it passed. I wasn't sure. And I thought if it passed that we could get a little update on how it works and, you know, if there was a benefit or a, a not a benefit to the county. Okay, okay. so I'll just send an update on it. Any new business? Um, I do have new business to bring up. Um, member Cahill is not here right now, but she had asked me a cup twice now this morning to look into um, something regarding that presentation we heard during finance about the DuPage Senior Citizens Council. Um, the woman, Marilyn, I, 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 I'm not familiar with that. So Marilyn was talking about needing help on the legislative side, and I'm not quite sure what her ask was, but Member Cahill asked me, like I said, twice today, if we could talk about this during legislative committee. Yeah. So I'm not sure where I to think, go from here. How I think I, I know, um, I was looking at her presentation, apparently because the COVID emergency disaster proclamation ends May 11th, some emergency funding they had for additional meals goes away. So um, because legislative committee is not gonna meet again until May 23rd, because we have to rotate with affordable housing. Right, if I right. have the committee, well, I mean, this happens all the time. I have to contact you or Chair Conroy because stuff moves so fast. And, I can't wait. And the, legislation, so, the legislative session is over May 19th. Right. So this so, is more of a budget item, but if there's a consensus, I talked to Connor, if there's a consensus among the members here that this would be a priority, I could talk to our lobbyists about trying to lobby. Budget items are very hard to lobby because it's a closed, the way they do budgeting in Springfield, it's a closed session with the leaders and, right. and staff. So there's not a lot of public input, but we could certainly reach out to Marilyn and say we support. And I could certainly tell our lobbyists anything we can do to support and communicate with our legislators. Do we have consensus? But, yeah, it was also. I mean, it just, yeah. I just, I just want to give Member Cahill the respect that she yeah. she came to me with an issue she wanted to support, and I totally support Member uh, Zay's position. It seems like a wonderful organization to double it from one twenty to two forty. But legislatively, you think we could do something between now and when the session closes, May nineteenth? Well, I was just saying too, I thought um, for what Marilyn was talking about too, is that there's this group that's fallen in the cracks, right? They, they don't oh, make enough money. population. Right? Right. right. So she wants to be able to include, have those people be able to be eligible for the Meals on Wheels program. And that's probably more of a long-term. So that's what next I year took from it. They won't do that have, in a couple weeks. Right. Yeah, so, but we could put it for I the know. fall. Oh, absolutely. I was going to save, save it, it for the fall. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Okay, so we give her member K all the respect that we're at least looking into it. Any other new business? Okay. Um, I'd like to make the motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.